know, one of the things we talked about just before this 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 presentation was about the the brotherhood of graffiti and the sisterhood of graffiti, right? Um, people you have uh, been friends with and writing with for many years. And I found this photograph of Lava, I, I believe it's FDT, yourself, Clyde, and, and Big Man. Uh, Reed, uh, Reed. Uh, Reed. Oh yeah, that's Reed. So, uh, and this was in 2009. Exactly. So, tell, tell me about this kind of unexpected um, fellowship that we have. This photo took place up in uh, Seattle, Washington. And uh, we, we all five of us went up there at the same time and uh, do a painting for a gentleman who rather not uh, have his name exposed, but he's someone who has one of the biggest graffiti collections in the world. And uh, matter of fact, he's got some of his paintings exhibit right now at the Shack uh, Art Center in Washington. Yeah, but you know, it, we, it, it was it was a great time to be with all my friends there. It was like one of the best times I had in my life, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting to, for many people that don't understand this about writers, young kids who grow up together, particularly through this culture, um, you know, many strong bonds hold over the years. Um, and and I, I, it, it's really impressive to see when in old timers day, you know, to see everybody get together uh, and, uh, you know, celebrate the, the culture, the history and one of the persons that you, you, you have done that with is with Coco. You and him go back many, many years. And, yes. You know, uh, you know, you guys recently did a, a show in Paris uh, with Spiestra, which is pretty in incredible, you know, uh, that you would find yourself in Paris after so many years. Tell, tell me about what that was like. Wow, man. That was... Uh... A great experience. I never been to Paris before. And what a place to go visit, man, and and go tag walls, which I actually did. <laughs> I even went down to the train station. I tagged the walls, and I, I did my thing, man. You know, and uh, but it was a it was a great show, and I I saw quite a few paintings there, maybe four or five paintings, and they were all old paintings from the early seventies. So. Yeah, there you go. Yep, all these paintings sold, man. And, uh, and so, and so now uh, this is so unusual, right? To find yourself as a globally celebrated artist. I mean, if you look at these early, early, I, I, I can only imagine this young kid not even imagining this for himself. Yeah, who like I said, who would have known, man? I mean, I, I, man, I I just want to keep doing shows, and well, most of my old stuff they they sold there, so I'm working on new stuff. Anybody's interested, and and I, oh, and I I'm starting my website today, a, a new website. It's uh, snake one eight 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 dot com. So that's happening today, also. And also, you wanna... sell you sell the snake shirt, right? You still sell I sell snake on t-shirts too. Yes, I do. Yes, and uh, it's funny how that happened, how it started. When I had the show in Sweden, it was around Christmas time, and this couple came to me. Hey, can you spray paint our sweatshirts for us outside? I said, sure, I, I did it. So I put it on Facebook. I spray painted sweatshirts for Christmas gifts for people out here. And then from there, it just took off. Everybody wanted one. So, hey, man, why not? And that's the way I'm getting my name around now because I've had people tell me, I wore your shirt in the street and somebody come up to me, you know Snake One? Yeah, yeah. And I had two people approach me, you Snake One? Yeah, yeah. So that's how I'm getting my name around now with my T-shirts, man. <laughs> how, how amazing is that? I know, right? 
And so, you. you know, now, now, now that you're exhibiting and, and, you know, being celebrated, uh, you know, what a legacy to leave us, right? Because now those of us who are active in, in, in this space and, and those after us, I mean, we're standing on your shoulders and, uh, you know, the world is starting to recognize you and other younger artists and curators are, are putting shows together around you and your generation. This one, this snake painting uh, is uh, from Beyond the Streets. Right. The show that Roger Gassman put together. Yes. Um, and, you know, again, this kind of reverence that the generations after you have uh, is, is, is a really unique and beautiful thing about the writing culture. And we, especially here at, at the museum, have, as you walk in to the show Style Masters, we start our conversation with writers like yourself and Coco and FaZe and SJK and others. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we we take that very seriously, you know, in terms of, of uh, the story and the, he the legacy and history we're going to you know, pass on to other people. Um, so I, I would only imagine that for you to see all this coming into fruition, that we would have our own museum. Who, I, I still say to myself, who would have thought? But I guess Alan, Kat, and Allison had the vision to kind of really see this through. Uh, you know, what, what, what's your thought on it? Wow. First of all, Congratulations and good luck with the museum. And I haven't had, I haven't visited yet, but I'm definitely going to go visit. But uh, to have yourself exhibit in museums and uh, galleries and it, it, it's, it's a complete honor. And uh, and I feel that I'm here to give back also you know, to to the public. Because um, I get a lot of support, so, but I have to support other artists too, which I do. I go to other sh artist shows. I buy paintings from other artists, and because I, the way I get the support, I want to support back. So I, I'm actually here to get back. Yeah, that's that's a beautiful thing. And again, the community is also giving back to you and supporting you. And uh, you mentioned. Uh, the Shack Art Center exhibition, which is recent, which is current, actually. Yes, uh, it's still going on now. Yep, and in Washington State. So if folks happen to be in Washington State, this looks like an incredible exhibition. Uh, yes. From, is it, is it a combination, right? Early first generation writers to current writers? Yes. And uh, here you are. Uh, is that your son with you? Yes, that's my son. Yeah, thank you, David. <laughs> David's in the house. Uh, but what, what I like, for instance, it, it, in this particular photograph, it, it, with the part piece behind it, I think that's such an important contrast right there. I love it. Yes. Right? In terms of the development and evolution of style, um, there's a great contrast there. Um, and, and so much that happens in between that, which I think is really really exciting and you know some of the stuff that's in between is th this kind of stuff the tag and you know of course straight man and his piece um and and you know we see uh vinnie uh, king vinnie. king vinnie and tracy uh alongside flint and revolt and cope so and re and so so tell me about this how was this received uh, were, were you there for the opening I was definitely there. I, I had to be there, man. It was, Actually, it was you funny. were there. I was just saying the picture. What am I saying? Yeah. <laughs> but, but, really? What was, what was the opening like? I mean, was it like well received? It was well received. It was a perfect crowd. It was a, 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 not, not too many few people and not too many crowded people. It was not a, like war to war people but it was a perfect crowd and you had two floors so it was very comfortable for people to walk around and enjoy the show and it, it was in a very comfortable atmosphere and 
and the paintings, all the paintings there, I mean, you, they were amazing paintings. And uh, I mean, look at the size of these paintings. That's yeah, no, they're cool. big. Yes, yeah. they're all big. That's right. By, man. by the way, Snake, um, Jules uh, from Shaq uh, says hello. Uh, amazing to meet you last month. Oh, okay. Hello. Jules Zanz, Zanzlu. Thank you, man. Yeah. So uh, what an amazing journey, right? That you have had, um, you know, from walls to trains to on being on stage uh, with, with the, the Joffrey Ballet and all of this that you've managed to accomplish. It, what, what a... What, a, what an amazing legacy and, again, you know, a blueprint for us to follow. Um, so, folks, we're going to take some questions for Snake. Um, so feel free to ask us some questions uh, as we close this out. Um, I, I think my question to you, Snake, is... Um, as you as you reflect on your life and this culture, given, given what it is now, like you mentioned earlier, it's a multi-million dollar business. Uh, what, what are your thoughts as to how it's matured? Uh, it has matured big time. And it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And uh, I mean, the, the, the younger generation, they're hip to all this, man. Uh, so they keep the movement going and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and the history going. So, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's I mean, it's always going to be here forever. Let's put it that way, man. And it's, and it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, man. You know, because the young kids are contributing to the history of graffiti. Man. Okay, you got some questions that came in um, from Oreos Design. What street in El Barrio did you grow up in? In El Barrio, I, I was uh, 102nd Street and 3rd Avenue. Uh, I lived in the projects there. We were like the, the projects there. I forget the name, but they were they were the brand new projects. We were the first ones to move there. Well, I was I was born there, so yeah. I lived there. In for, those times, for, projects were like really nice. Yes, and like I said places. before, uh, it was it was safe too, and I was able to go out and hang out on the street when I was only six, seven years old. And but uh, but 102nd, Second, Third Avenue, and uh, Spanish Harlem, and. It was, uh, it, it was a very interesting uh, neighborhood uh, culture because yeah, that's where the Marqueta right there, which is the really Marqueta, cool. and that's where all the Puerto Ricans first moved from Puerto Rico to Spanish Harlem, and, yeah. and then you know, then you had the Black Harlem, and the Puerto Ricans and Blacks, you had the Black Panthers. They were the Puerto Ricans and Blacks. They were tight. And they yeah. were real tight. And you also had the Young Lords coming out of that. The community. Young Lords, that's right. Yes. And mm -hmm. what was that like? Uh, were you familiar with any of them? Were you, were you involved with it at all? No, I was like, I was much younger when the Young Lords were, were out. And uh, yeah, those, that was the Puerto Rican gang and uh, with Felipe Luciano. Yeah, he was one of them. And uh, yeah, man, it was very interesting because you had the young laws in the black space, and I was wow, you know, that, that, that's like, whoa, what a combination, man, you know, and to be in New York in, in that same particular neighborhood, you know, you had the two two types of Harlem, but like I said, we were we were all tight, man. We didn't fight among each other, man. We looked out for each other, to put it that way, man. Yeah, oh, you know what? I I, I want you to. Uh, since you were uh, the first generation of writers to really clarify this for people, um, because it's not enough coming from my mouth, at, at how integrated uh, writing was 
And, it, you know, and I'll just make a, a little asterisk on saying that, that I'm not saying graffiti because you guys didn't know it as graffiti. You guys were just writers. But in terms of who started this culture, it was a mix of people. It wasn't, you know, just, you know, as the press portrayed it, you know, black and Puerto Rican kids who are like lawless. It was a mix, right? It was all cultures involved in the writing culture. It was, it was all kind of people that started graffiti. Tacky was Greek. And then you had uh, S.A.K. He's also Greek. And you had, uh, you had Stitch. He was Cuban. And it, it, it was all a mixture of all, all different uh, races. And uh, so, you know, it, it, it was, it was a, uh, a combination of uh, all nationalities, man, because there was a, 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 a art movement that was caught on very quickly in the eyes of everyone throughout the city. Dr. Turner asked, what were your main train lines? I was from the Broadway line since I was from Washington Heights, the number one train. And then we moved over to the A train. That was over at the 207 train yard. And uh, But I, I've been to a couple of layups in the Bronx and, you know, and uh, I was I didn't go to the train yards much, but I did go. But I was more of a tagger than anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I mean, what an incredible uh, journey it was, man, for me and everyone else that was there during my time. Right. Um, Tour one. Uh, he probably didn't see the first half of this, but uh, the first part. But he asked, "How did you come up with your name, Snake?" Okay, like I mentioned before, my uncle, when I was a kid, my uncle used to take us to the drag strip a lot. We used to go to National Speedway, Long Island, and then we used to go to illegal drag strips like the Cross Bronx Expressway, Connecting Highway. And these people, they used to they used to throw down money to bet, man. You know, I had to look at your engine and see your engine because it's what it's what's under the hood that counts. But I, he, Don Padone, the snake. Was my favorite drag racer. He 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 raced a funny car, so that's how I got my name because he was my favorite drag racer. So I, I, it just uh, grew on me, man. <laughs> I said, hey, that's a perfect name, man. It's fun, Another man. question right? from La Debu. La Debu. She asks, did you draw any characters as part of your graffiti pieces? No, I never did characters. That came later on. But when people started doing characters, a lot of people criticized it because that, that wasn't really your name. You know, okay, you could do cartoons and all that, but there were people who didn't dig it, man. And uh, I didn't, I didn't care as long as I, I, I did my shit. You know, I wasn't into characters. No. So when did you when did you first see that like characters coming into the scene? Uh, well, Rick One Seventy did character. I believe Phase Two did character, and and these are big names, man, doing characters. So, yes, you know, yeah, there you go, you know. So these were top artists, man, doing. So you know, it caught on, you know, and you know they did some nice characters. So maybe I wasn't good at doing characters, so I stuck with my name. <laughs> nice. Uh, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask Snake while we have him uh, with us. Um, one, one of the things I was always fascinated, you know, it's always hard to pinpoint who innovates what, right? Um, and, and I'm so happy you told me that T-Rex um, was the first one to do the top to bottom. Because that's was... always open to, like, debate with people. Um, it, you know, the... the uh, do you know some of the people who did the first the first like who did the first three d pieces the first shadow pieces well uh I know coco one forty four was one of the first ones to do the crown along with k one six one and and then s j k always with the arrows and uh yeah, the arrow. Where where did that come from? Do you, I, I <laughs> Man, I guess 
you, we always kept moving, man. You went to train to train to train, so it's like an album, man. You you're going places. You you somebody shooting an album. You you you're hitting all of the bases, man. You know. So, um, do you have any, in terms of writers, like your all-time favorite? Like, who's the best writer that for you? You know, who's your all-time great greatest writer? I mentioned before that one, two of my favorites were Phase Two and Coco, but I I used to like uh, Junior with Six One Star K. I and I used to like uh, especially Super Super Stuff One. He had a great signature, and uh, and I believe he's still around. And, and Stay High, you know, I mean, what a name to pick, man. You know what I'm saying? Stay and then with the man, the, the the stick figure with the with the joint in his mouth. Come on, man, who did that? Nobody. I would agree. He's he's uh he's my top top writer. Me too. Uh, Definitely, I think he's the top in the whole world. Number one, man. <laughs> uh, welcome back, back uh, Clotter asks, which writer from your era you think doesn't get enough shine? Say that again, I'm sorry. What writer from your era you feel doesn't get enough shine? Oh, man. Uh, man, I would have to say, you know, it's hard. That's a hard question, man, because, uh, you know, I know I wrote with Stitch at K87, but it was always me and Stitch 1, you know. But you have to remember, Cat was there with us, too. So I, I think he's the one who's not getting enough shine on this, man. Right. I have another question here from Destuno. Um, what is your take on the documentary film Style Wars? When you saw Style Wars, what was your what were your thoughts on that? Star Wars, you know, I didn't see it when it first came out, but I saw it later on, and it did have a lot of impact in the graffiti world. But you cannot never compare the way it was back in my day. And, uh, so it's, it was completely different lifestyle, first of all. And, um, but I felt it was a great uh, documentary. And, uh, and, and this is what keeps the graffiti movement going. And see, we have uh, now the, the, the new one, War Riders by Roger Gassman. That's a must see. War Riders, Graffiti and It's Innocent. That's, I recommend everyone sees that because it talks about graffiti, how it started in the early 60s and early, late 60s and early 70s between Philadelphia and New York because they claimed they were first, we claimed we were first. And, but it became like a, a friendship battle, man. And I got to meet all the guys in Philly. They got to meet us. And, you know, graffiti has a, a whole different family. It's a completely diff different. If you if you don't know anything about graffiti, then you won't know about the family. And it's a super huge one. I just want to share this with you from Agent Decoy. He says, "Snake One, I want to thank you for your generosity and hospitality you gave us back in '99 at the Martinez East West show." Spy, TDK. I, I, you, you thank that? you. I remember that, man. <laughs> thank you, man. I, that was a great show, bro. See, and I got to meet the guys from the co West Coast, too. And they got to meet us. So, yeah. there you go. Yeah, and, and you mentioned Wall Riders. And if, if, if uh, you haven't seen the film, uh, go check it online. Uh, if you want to buy the book, you can go to our shop at the Museum of Graffiti.com shop and, and purchase it. It's a fantastic book. Uh, it is. It, it's some rare, rare, rare photographs of you guys when you were young kids and also the guys from Philadelphia. Um, and, uh, you know, I had the opportunity to interview Cornbread, uh, which is a great honor. And I also got to meet him in person. And because uh, he was also kind of a mythic figure, you know, because of, uh, of the stories we heard. And, of course, Cornbread, Earl and me, the movie. Uh, yes. Uh, so he, he was that guy. Uh, yeah. But, but I, I, would, I, I would say for me, when I was coming up, uh, really... The, the, 
you know, State High was really one of the giants of, of, of the culture. Him and, and of course, uh, what was another one that was really like wild was, I think Stim was one of them. Uh, he was one of the great ones, Taki. Uh, I, I, I have to share this with you because my, when I got into writing, and me and my brother Kel, um, I, I started first just kind of playing around in school because I had been seeing it everywhere. But then we realized that there was this whole history behind it and, and, and these signatures and, and then the gangs, the gangs that were all around us and, and some of them that we knew that had other names. Um, and then all of a sudden we realized, wait a minute, this has been going on already for about 10 years or, or maybe less than 10 years uh, that this amazing writing culture was happening. And the cool factor was incredible, right? Like you go into school and you be like, yo, oh, there's my name. There's my name. <laughs> and there's, you're able to kind of decipher each other's tags. Uh, so um, I, 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 you know, I remember early on being so uh, interested in the history, our history, uh, a lot. And, and from where I was right down 139th Street, it was a great area um, because we had all those gangs in my neighborhood, the Skulls, the Bachelors, and That's right. and so on. But also we had Writer's Corner uh, about a mile away, 149th Street Grand Concourse. So, yeah, it was... It's, and, it's you know, time, so. I'm happy to be a part of the history of graffiti. And like I said, that's why I'm here now to get back. And I just want to share something. These are, I, I saved this as I was a, a teenager. These are the, one of my first spray cans. And, and these are the dry, dry mat, J markers. These are the ones that we used to use. We were, these were the first ones we used, man. And I, I, I like to save stuff like this. And, and it's funny, this marker here, you could remove the cap and fill it up with ink. Who would have thought back in those days you could fill up your marker with ink, you know? And we used to use Flowmaster ink or we used to steal the, the purple ink from the supermarkets. That was a killer, man, you know. And then the tips, we had a, we had a, today you could buy tips, skinny fat. Today, back in the days, we used to steal tips, like from oven spray, because it sprays wide, or, uh, or starch, because it sprays yeah. wide. Yeah, man, you know, we had to invent our, invent our tips, but it's funny I said the word invent, but when we used to go steal paint, we, that's the word we use. Let's go invent paint. That's the, let's go inventing. Let's go meet and invent. So you, you invent something. Hey, look, I just invented this, man. <laughs> so that was the word we use, man. We all, ha we all had a different vocabulary. That's why people who don't know anything about uh, graffiti won't understand. That's why we have to teach them this. Yeah. I'm, I'm laughing here because uh, Unrad Latina says that's why they started locking it up in the yeah. <laughs> Did you become a kleptomaniac uh, because of graffiti and stealing everything and stealing your supplies? Yes, I was sort of like a a semi-professional thief, man. You know, I hate to say it, man. I used to, I used to not only steal paint, but I used to steal a lot of other stuff. I wouldn't even get into yeah. details, man. Like I went to Alfred E. Smith in the Bronx on my lunch break. I used to go down to Third Avenue to the, I forget what the department store was there. Alexander's? And, uh, huh? Alexander's? Yes. I used to go there on my lunch break just to steal stuff, man, you know? And then I used to sell it, man. I, albums. I was big in stealing albums. And I was a DJ also, so I, I couldn't afford to buy albums, so I stole all my albums. I didn't know this. Please tell us, tell us more about this. That you were a DJ. I had no idea. You know something? I think I started DJing before I started doing graffiti, man. You know that? I was one of the first guys that I ever had two turntables, man. Yeah, this and I, 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 took my 40, I, I took cool out my forty. I took out my. Huh? Are you saying that this is before Cool Herc? Yeah, man. <laughs> Yes. Come on, man. I started graffiti in 1970. I started doing DJing around that time. I started buying 45s when I was only 9 years old and 10 years old. And I still got all my 45s today. No way. And, and, what, and you had two turntables. Yes. 
Yes. I was like 13 years old when I started DJing. And uh, I, still got, I still got all my collection from back in the days. And, and, and vinyl is back, too. And, you know, so I used to steal my albums, man. So, we, so I, I want to focus on this a little bit, because where did you see that and get the idea? Uh, Ket says a lot of you guys were DJs. I had no idea that you guys were rocking. To, I can see one turntable at a party, but two turntables, again, predating Cool Herc. Yeah, it, it, um, that's it, it, interesting I, because Ket is saying Undertaker, Ash, SJK171 was also a DJ. A DJ, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I started very young. I, I, I think I started doing that before graffiti, man. You know, because I, I always loved music, and and then I used to DJ for all the parties that UGA thrown, and I did weddings and birthday parties and. It, yeah, so it was, it was it was my thing. And I was I was into the music, you know. But uh, let me tell you how we used to steal our albums. We used to wear these green army coats, the long army coats. That was, that's the way we store our spray paint. We would steal, yeah. steal it in our, put it on our sleeve and or in our pockets. And, but the army coats, if you put your hand inside the, the pocket in the front, there was a slit there where you could go through the slit and I could put my hand in my pants pocket and you won't know. So I put my hand through the slit and I would pass the albums to my hand underneath my coat. And then you you had to be careful. You didn't want to get too greedy and steal more than five albums at the same time because then it gets heavy. Then the albums in between will slip out. You know? So we had a we, you had a choice of putting it in the front with the coat closed, or with the coat open, you slip the albums through your legs and hold it. And hold your arm like that, holding it behind your your butt and shit. Yeah, well, we 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 became professionals doing that. What, man. what kind of music were you were you lifting? Back in the days, I was into R and B. James Brown, he's my favorite. But when I started DJing, uh, it was R and B, but disco was big in our days. We used to go to the discotheques all the time. That was very popular, man. Uh, so I, I lived my life in clubs also. I was always in the club and after hours. And, and I still go out today. I still go now, so party. That, but that was, that was kind of just after you left graffiti or during your, your, your time? At during the, the graffiti days, yes. Yeah, in the early 70s. All, you know, me, Stitch, and all, all the guys from Riders Corner. We used to go to the clubs. and What clubs? Tell me, which clubs did you go to in New York? Some of the first ones was called uh, Kentucky. That was the, one of the first clubs I went to, Kentucky. Then you had the Footsteps. And then uh, later on, you had the, the Starship on Times Square. And uh, the, uh, the, I mentioned the Footsteps. Uh, there were so that many was clubs. Towards uh, 8th uh, Avenue, right? Huh? That one was towards 8th Avenue, right? Starship? Yes. Yeah, the Starship, yes. And, and it's in, in Golden in, in the parking lot, like, yeah. 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 But uh, the, 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 the townhouse 48, that was on 48th Street on the east side. It was a townhouse. It was three floors. And you pay $10 and all you could drink, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm fascinated because you must have been all of, what, 17, 16? Yes. Yes, I was, I was young, young, man. Yeah, I, I was always in the clubs, man. Always, man. <laughs> I, I, I sort of like lived my life in the fast lane, man. And... uh. I, I thank God I'm still here, you know, because a lot of my friends flip, are not. Flip one, flip one says loved, he loved clubbing back then. Yes. Oh, those were the days, man. You, you had all t different type of people, man. Straight, black, white, gay. It was a mixture, man. You know, everybody got along. And uh, uh, what can I tell so let me you? Let ask you something. Given that background as a writer and a DJ, then all of a sudden, in, in about 1980 or so, this term hip hop appears, right? Uh, coming from the Bronx. And yeah. I, I could only imagine you saying, What's hip hop? We've been doing this all along. No, I fell in love with hip hop right away, man, because I love music. You know, I, love, I, love, I like jazz. Sasa, you know, hip hop when it came out, it came out in the late 70s, not 80s. It came out 
Right, but we're saying I, I'm kind of just I'm I'm kind of broadening the definition as not just hip hop music as a culture, right? That all of a sudden under this umbrella, writing, b boying, b girling, DJing, and rapping became this thing, right? For us, because I remember when I was writing, uh, when when I started writing, um, it wasn't. We weren't calling it graffiti. We were just getting up and hitting and, and tagging. And then the word graffiti, the paper graffiti book came around and we were just like, oh, so it's called graffiti. Uh, but then all of a sudden, these things that we were just normally doing, whether it was just dancing and writing and, you know, popping shit on the mic, uh, then all of a sudden uh, from the Bronx, the north, more northern Bronx from me, uh, from uh, Bronx River, this concept evolves of, of putting it all under one umbrella did did you and some of the guys from your generation I, I mean aside from loving it did you connect to it like oh wait yeah I'm part of the hip-hop family now I'm part of hip-hop culture now definitely it, 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 it just it was there and it, and it grew on us because it was a whole different type of music, you know? And, and, and the word hip hop, that's what it was. It was hip hop, man. It was hip, hip, hip music. You know, we were all hip back in the days. Back in the days, we used to dress sharp, man. We all had Italian knits and, and shadow stripe pants and Playboy shoes. And we all dressed sharp, man. We used to take our, our, our jeans and take them to the dry cleaners because we wanted them to look, look, look like a, a fucking suit we wearing, man, you know? Back in the days, so everybody dressed up nice, and, and the hip hop that 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 like sort of took over. And you know what? Today, hip hop is probably the biggest music th there is out there right now. Yeah, but you know, there's controversy in our community with writers who, and and legitimately so, they say, "Look, we're not we're writers. We're not part of graffiti. Is not part of hip hop." And um, I don't like spending a lot of time debating that with folks because I say. Yes, you're right, and yes, you're wrong. And it depends. It, it, it's hip hop if you were part of the hip hop community and culture. If you were part of that experience and bought into that experience where uh, it all came under this umbrella and it all represented this uh, social experience that you're having. Because some writers, uh, maybe from way up North Bronx, were just rock and roll heads, right? They would just happen to be graph writers. I talked to Blade about this. He was like, Man, I, we were into funk and Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd and, you know, tripping out, right? And then you got guys like you that were into disco and funk and all this stuff. Um, and uh, he felt that he feels that it's not part of hip hop culture per se. So that's an that's an open debate out there that that, that uh, many people have. But I, I'm glad that you, you know, readily embraced it. Um, as a writer, as as a DJ. Yes, and you know, I know graffiti uh, started before uh, hip hop music, but it was a great combination together because it was it was the street life that we were raised in and grew up yeah. to, and uh, but it, I mean. Uh, it, you know, it, 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 it came together perfectly. You know? So that's why a lot of people, they, they, they relate the two together. Yeah. And let me just go back to a thought, and I probably should have asked you this uh, at the top. Huh? You, you know, now that we call this uh, graffiti writing or style writing, your generation, did you guys, when did you guys start calling it graffiti? Or like originally, did you guys just call it tagging and writing? We called it tagging or hitting. Let's go hit some walls. Hitting. Graffiti, that, to me, that came a little later on, but a lot of people didn't like that word because it was a, a sort of like a bad word. And I believe it was a French word that means scrolling you're scrolling it's you know? italian we wasn't was scrolling italian we were tagging or hitting of it. i can't hardly hear you now man we lost um, we lost 
Okay, I'll speak a little louder. Uh, yeah, it's the, it derives from an Italian term called graffiato. I didn't, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. It, it comes from a term called graffiato. Okay, I believe so. Yeah, that was like a, a Italian, right? Yeah, uh, Mike Mike one seventy one says the media gave gave you guys the name, uh, labeled you graffiti. They label us graffiti artists, well not artists, bandos really, because uh, I, I, I never looked at myself a van, as a vandal. You know, I, vandal is someone who destroys. You know, and I guess if you want to say I destroy trains and buses, okay, now I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I, I was an ex vandal then, I guess. I don't know. And, uh, but a lot of people didn't like the word graffiti because it was not uh, the right name to to uh, be for us to be labeled as uh, graffiti uh, vandals. That's what we were. That's right. what people looked at us as. You know. Right. But but I also think that you know, as Kep points out, the UGA United Graffiti Artists, um, since that became very popular in the press really set the precedent so that you're seen as an artist. Exactly. That's when we first realized that maybe we are artists, you know, because we're doing something other people have never done. And, yeah. I, and also, Doc, Dr. Turn says, he points out NOGA, Nation of Graffiti Artists, as well. And it's interesting because it's pointing out, like, artists. You know, we're emphasizing and ending it with artists. We are graffiti artists. And there, there, there is, there is, yes, there is, even to this day, there's a difference between a, being a graffiti artist and a graffiti vandal. And, and it, it, it's very specific, you know. Um, uh, and even, you know, phase two, I, I, I don't know when he decided to kind of, maybe you can enlighten me. When, when did phase decide the G word was an issue because he was part of UGA, which had the word graffiti. When did FaZe decide he didn't want to use the graffiti word as associating to his art? Yeah, he was one person who was really against the word graffiti. And there were uh, quite a few other people also, but like I said, graffiti, it was sort of like a, a bad name for us. Uh, and that's the word that they label us as graffiti, not artists, vandals. And, but it was a word that they just had to come up with. What is that they doing on the wall? What is that? You know. So, hey, graffiti. That's, yeah, graffiti. That, you know, that, that's not, it, to us, it, it became art later on. But to us, it was just putting our signature up, you know, and letting people know who we, who we were, you know, who, who, and, and what we're all about. You know. So if anybody has any other questions, please feel free to submit them. Um, Snake, you know, it, it really is an honor to have this conversation with you. Uh, it's, it's so important for all of us who are, uh, spending this time with you. And again, we're going to repost this so people can also uh, learn more about you and your story and the history of graffiti, right? The history of writing, the history of getting up. It's, it's so invaluable to hear from our elders. I can't, uh, I can't hardly hear you. You got to talk to Oh, I, I, you can't, can't really hear me. It's weird. I don't know why my, my, my volume has gone down. I'm speaking a bit louder. Okay. Um, but in, in any event, listen, I don't want to keep you much longer. I, I really want to, on behalf of the Museum of Graffiti, our staff and our friends who are online with us, I, I really want to thank you, brother. You blessed us. Uh, you blessed us when you started, you and your comrades. You paved the way for us. That's right. You, Mike171, thank you uh, for, you know, putting down this platform for us to uh take this to the next level there you go that's right man <laughs> and the next one and the next one and the next one 
we got to keep going up, brother. You know, thank you so much for the interview, bro. I really appreciate it, man. Like I said, I'm always here to get back, bro. We we appreciate you, Mr. Snake. One. Thank you, man. Peace, brother. Take care. <laughs> thank you, bro. And again, everyone, thank you all for joining us. And uh, like I always say, you know, check in on us online, museumofgraffiti.com. Uh, come check out the programming we have going on. If you're in Miami, stop by, get a ticket, come visit us, come say hello, and uh, look at the murals in the community. And again, this this is all a result of uh, people like you. So thank you. Thank you, man. Thanks so much, man. Have a good night, everyone. Peace, bro.